hey guys yes i know i know it's been long yeah but something beyond my power happened and i had to stay off for some time uh the good news is that i'm back i'm fully back for you guys so this particular interview of uh, olushegun or basanjo and uh, jude is currently trending and a lot of people have a lot of things to say about that interview because the interview is loaded but the thing is that some people are only talking about few minutes of the video like twitter is currently on fire because of that interview so i'm gonna be watching the full video with you guys but before we get to that i want to beg you to please help me by liking and sharing this video with others so that youtube and facebook are recommended to more people so without wasting much of your time let's go straight to it thank you so much for giving me time today sir we appreciate it i want to start by um there's a council you're a member of, Interaction Council. Mm. And one of the things that they said on their website is that the life that you've lived has raised the stature of President Obasanjo above that of any other living Nigerian. When you hear a comment like that, what do you think? How do you respond? Does it feel gratifying or does it feel exaggerated? You, you know, people are entitled to make comments and remarks. Mm. Uh, there are no two people in the world who have had the same experience, none. Even if they are twins, their experiences will be different. At least they won't marry the same woman. <laughs> and uh, um, their experiences are bound to be different. Uh, I thank God the opportunities that I have had, both local, continental mm. and global that had made me to have the advantage of meeting and sharing views and um, actually interacting with some of the best brains and best achievers mm. in the world, mm. whether in the field of politics, in the field of religion, in, in whatever field, mm. diplomacy, business, agriculture, whatever. To me, it has made me humble mm. that, uh, but that uh, it has also made me to continue to thank God for allowing me to have such opportunity, right. which has meant a lot in my life. Right. How so? How has it meant a lot in your life? Sir? Oh, the impact mm. that the interaction with these people, right. I learned a lot from them. Right. A lot. Does it hurt when you find somebody? Yes. I mean, I'm talking in this case about, let's say, let's use an Air example. You find a talent, you elevate the talent to national prominence. Mm -hmm. While the person is in office, the mm. person sings your praise, says, look, anytime, any house I demolish, Baba gave me the full authority, full political will, it is he. And then you are no longer in power <laughs> and the music changes. That must hurt on a personal level, doesn't it? Why no, you it, used doesn't, to it? it doesn't hurt me at all. Um, it doesn't. You, you, you see, if you expect praise from human beings, even the one that you have done good to, hmm. you will be the unhappiest man in the world. If it comes, accept it as bonus. Hmm. But whatever you do, do it and be ready to defend it before God and man. Hmm. If uh, there's need for you to defend it before man, yes. If there's need for you to defend it before God, mm. well, you wait until you get to God's kingdom. Yeah. Uh, either before you get to God's kingdom, whether you go to hell or go to heaven, <laughs> you know. Uh, but on a serious note, don't expect praise or commendation from any human being. Mm. If it comes, Accept it. Mm. Don't be proud of it. Take it as, well, 
um, uh, it's like the ten lepers, ten lepers, ten lepers. They were uh, cured by Jesus Christ just by saying, "Look, go and show yourself." Mm. And one of them said, ah, "Look." It must be because this man who said we should go and show ourselves that, that so I will go back. Mm. Nine others did not go back. Only 10%. So if you do good and you get commendation, uh, gratitude mm. from 10%, mm. then you are doing as well as Jesus Christ has done for himself. <laughs> Right. So you have to get used to it. Yeah. Now, you have to. Uh, if you get more than that, oh, yeah, you are on top of the world. <laughs> but uh, what must be yeah. your guiding rule is, look, what I'm doing, mm. can I defend it before God? Is my conscience clear? Mm. Am I clear in my conscience? Yeah. Can I defend it before God? Can I defend it before objective human beings? Mm. Mm. Objective human being. Right. And if you can, oh, your conscience is clear. I always say that. This also comes to leadership lessons or what you would consider. When the interview reports came out of some of those big, these were big acts that you did. Mm. And I'm just using an example where you went to the bomb blast in yes. Lagos. And you yes. visited. People didn't expect yes. it. It was a yes. gracious, big leadership act. Yes. Yes. And then when they began to attack you with questions, mm -hmm. you answered by saying, I was not supposed to be here. People said, that was lacking in empathy. When no, you look back, do you no, wish you had to say something? I don't regret that. Right. That's, look, there's no thing in the Constitution that says <laughs> where there's a blast that you go there. Mm. As I always say, I was going around to states, mm. both as military head of state and as uh, a president, right. to see what is going on in the state. But there was nothing in the Constitution that says I should do that. I so thought I'm not. I wasn't supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. If I've chosen to go there, then that's part of my character. Right. And if you don't appreciate that, that's entirely up to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not supposed to be there. I'm not supposed to. Now you ask me, you want to interview. I'm not supposed to uh, say yes. Willingly, I will answer you. I, I can say it's my choice. So, and if I say, oh, you have come, all right, I will give you, I will grant you an interview. Mm. You appreciate it, all well and good. You don't appreciate it, all well and good. Right. But I am not, uh, uh, there's no compulsion mm. that I should answer, uh, I should give you, I grant you an interview. Is there? No. Okay. Well, it's the same thing. Yeah. I can never forget the image. You wrote uh, one of your famous letters. You wrote a letter to Good Luck Jonathan mm -hmm. at the time. What did I say in that? <laughs> Essentially, that his leadership was feckless in summary. In was summary. Uh, feckless. His leadership was ineffective. You yeah. Know? And he was away from the reins. And I'm assuming, obviously, you still stand by that. But then a week after, there you were at the reception for his daughter's hmm. wedding. Well, you see, again, that part of what you people don't understand. Yeah. Uh, there's difference between my social relationship with you mm. and my relationship with you as far as Nigeria is concerned. Mm. You know, I, I still hold that position, that all, the, all the position I hold with uh, uh, Buhari. But if Buhari, on the 1st of January this year, Buhari phoned me uh, and, and say wishing me uh, Happy New Year, I say, Mr. President, uh, I really appreciate this. We didn't do that before. And uh, I said, well, look, Mr. President, I want to wish you rest when you uh, give up at the, uh, this year. I also want to wish you recuperation, and maybe you will have good time to reflect. Mm. And I said, look, when you rest, uh, you, you settle down. I didn't know whether he would settle down where. So when you settle down and um, you let me know, I will even come and pay you a visit. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, will you? I, said, I will. And that, uh, 
what he has done or undone about Nigeria is on record. Even if you want to whitewash it, the amount of white paint that you will need to wash what is deeply black, mm. and then you want to turn it to deeply white. Mm. Uh, doesn't work that way. Okay. Well, some people cannot uh, separate that, which is unfortunate. Mm. Yeah, that, well, uh, if you are my son and you do what is wrong, mm. uh, you will be punished. But I'm still your father. If you take me as your father, uh, if you decide that, look, um, you don't want to take me as your father anymore, that's your lookout. But people have said, sir, that you are vindictive. Mm. President Bola Tinubu said when he was governor of Lagos State, he has said this many times, mm -hmm. that you frustrated his attempts at um, revenue and actually inspired him to now begin to generate revenue internally, that you wanted to cripple Lagos State. And no, that's, that's absolute nonsense. Right. No. I go by constitution. Right. The constitution of Nigeria, which is also enshrined, recognized local governments. Mm -hmm. And then for me to release funds, to look at government, it has to be on the basis of 20 local governments. Mm. When you then add, is it 37 or 27, whatever, to that, for me to be able to act constitutionally, mm. the constitution of Nigeria has to change. Mm. For as long as that constitution did not change, then acting along not 20 local government, but 57 local government is unconstitutional. Right. So if he doesn't know that, then he doesn't know anything. Right. But what do you say to that child? So is it that one that make him to have uh, alpha beta? Huh? <laughs> right. So on the did you answer that? I, I, yes, I, I, it's a question for him to answer. So okay, it's well. a question for President Tinubu to answer about alpha beta. But the charge of vindictiveness, what do you say to that? People have said it more than once. You know, mm. Alam Yeseka has said it, oh. Ibori has said it. Now, well, these people, let them give you chapter and verse. If Ibori has said it, mm. and I hope he has not, but if you say he has said it, mm. what happened to Ibori? EFCC investigated the body and they found the body has misappropriated about $200 million. Yeah. And they brought the report to me. And I said, Ebori, come, look at the report. Okay, assuming you have spent, wasted uh, $50 million, go and give EFCC $150 million. Mm. Then he came back and said, okay, uh, where should we put it? I said, look, it's not your money, it's the state, your state's money. Give it to your state. He said, how do I do that? Open a central bank account for me, which I did. Hmm. And then he came back and said, oh, if he just put money in a central bank account belonging to Delta, I should open central bank account for all uh, states. I did. Then he thought he was being clever. He took $15 million cash to Ribado. And Ribado came and said, put it in their account in central bank. And then we still pursue it. So it was, it was pursued up to London, where he went to prison. Mm. So if that is vindictiveness, I would say, let us let Nigeria have more of such vindictiveness. <laughs> <coughs> Third term, sir. Mm? Third term. Mm. Answered this a couple of times. Now, the people who believe you, mm. you know, when you said you didn't seek, and you've said it that everything, you've never had to fight for anything, mm. that God gives you things. Mm. People said, okay, if you didn't seek third term, why didn't you vehemently discourage people like Tony and Nene, who were said to be lobbying? Maybe it wasn't you but these were your hands, men. Why didn't you discourage them firmly from asking for a third term for you? But did uh, Anini tell you that I ever said to him, go and do the third term for me? No, he didn't. Okay. But you could have asked him to stop, sir. But I didn't. he didn't tell me doing it. Hmm. He did not. 
So you were so, not aware? I'm not aware that uh, uh, Anini is lobbying for Toto. Or anybody else? No. The governors are, some of them, but they were doing it for themselves. How so? Because if the president gets third term, mm. they too will also get third term. Right. And there was nothing that would stop them. Because they were not doing it for the president, mm. they were doing it for right. themselves. So why don't people believe you when you say, when some people believe you, many people believe you when you say, you didn't want a third term, why does it keep coming up, sir? Well, why does it co keep coming up when they even know that the amount of money spent in NEP, uh, for NEPA is not what Yaradua called it or what Buhari called it? <laughs> <laughs> you answer that for me. <laughs> Those are heavy allegations, sir. <laughs> right. So it's just the nature of the political games, what you're saying. I was um, military head of state, and Sharia became an issue in the Constituent Assembly. I think it was yes, Constituent, Constituent Assembly. Yes. And I called somebody who was very vehement. I called him and I said, look, you, Sharia Court of Appeal, you won't go there. You won't take any issue there. He said, yes. But why are you? It's a politics. Mm politics. So what suits people politically, mm. they will say or do, yeah. not what they believe right. or what they mean. So I don't go by what people say, I go by what people do. You've spoken a bit about character and integrity, yeah? And people, when they want to throw mud at you, mm. say, but you, Seth, you too were corrupt. <laughs> and then they, they talk about, you see, ask questions like, how did he get the money to establish Bell's University? How did he get the expanse of land for the Obasanjo complex? Look, How is he so wealthy? Okay, go to Bell's University. Let them see the account. Mm. I started as a secondary school. Mm. And I built every house in the school by myself. Direct labor. Direct labor by yourself? Direct labor. And you can go there. And when the university came, mm. I wanted to leave the university. Then they went there. And what really impressed them was the laboratory. Mm. And they said, oh, they would take the laboratory. This is good for university. So, mm. And the university on its own is self-propelled. If you go there today, what the parents association have done in that university, you won't believe. Right. I want to point just generally to the, yeah. the idea that you're a very wealthy person. I mean, we're in this sprawling <laughs> complex. Yeah. This, this one, you can look, go down and you can go into a book, what people gave. Right. So yeah. if others don't know how to raise funds mm. to do this type of thing, then don't cast as passion on those who do. This year you wrote another of the letters that shook the political firmament. But what was more striking, which is, was you said this letter is for the young people. You kept referring to the young people, the young people. Mm -hmm. Why was that so important to you? No, the, the young people are very important. And in any society, you ignore your young people, you ignore the society. Mm -hmm. And what do we say today in Nigeria? More than 60% of our population are below the age of 25 or 25 yeah. and under, something like that. Now, what are you going to do about them? What are you going to do for them? When, of course, those who come to power, all they think about is the next election, not the next generation. Mm. And for as long as we are not thinking of the next generation, mm. we are destroying their future. Right. That's why that's important to you. It is very important to me. It is very important to me. Part of the fire from that letter was, I mean, you, you mentioned Alphabeta with our new president. You were very... Well, no, 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 because, I'm not going to talk about it. Yes, it's, uh, it's because you said uh, he then went to... Uh, I look for alternative funding. Yes. So alternative funding for whom? For the state or for himself? 
or for his, the state and himself. Why was Peter Obi so important to you? You know, you stood... It's not Peter Obi that is important to me. It's Nigeria. You see, that the mm. type of thing that you people do and say that annoys me. Okay. Okay. Peter Obi is not the issue. Okay. Nigeria to me is the issue. Mm. Okay. Mm. Tell, you know, when you say, you know, Peter Obi is, uh, Peter Obi is Peter Obi. It's Nigeria. So it was because of Nigeria that you thought this was the man? Yes. Right. I, For Nigeria that I believe we need to have mm. at this point in time, mm. Peter Obi is still That's all. the man. That's all. So did any of your successors impress you in any way? Any of them? Yara Dua? Oh, you see, again, that's the type of thing you people say. Mm. Look, I don't have a hero mm. except Jesus Christ. And I said, even with Jesus Christ, mm. the man aspect of him is not perfect. Mm. Okay? But there are certain things that you may have. Take Mandela. Mm. How can you stay in prison for 27 years and still have no grudge against those who put you in prison? Mm -hmm. I believe that is extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah. That is extraordinary. Yeah. And I will respect him eternally for that. Mm -hmm. But the other aspect of his life that I will not accept. Right. Okay? So that, that goes for... Uh, anything. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, if you if you take any man, there may be certain ab aspect of life. But I don't have a hero. Right. Yeah. No, I have to ask this, sir. Why was it so important to you to go back to school? I, I went to school first. I want to show by example that there's no li age limit mm. or position limit to education. So, if I have been president of Nigeria, and at the age of 80, I'm pursuing formal education. What will you say at the age of 50? How old are you? 38. 38? Yes, sir. At the age of 38, oh. you are still a, a, a baby. <laughs> you are not going to school. Um, so I, I think there's that uh, on a serious note, that uh, aspect. On the other hand, I chose to study Christian uh, theology. Yes. Um, because I want to learn more about God mm. so that I can worship him better. Mm. And anything you learn about, you will understand it and mm. Mm. take Steps to notice of it or do whatever you need to do about yeah. it. Yeah. And, and, and that's all. Mm. And I, I, I enjoy it and it was good for me. And, uh, what do you think is going to happen to Nigeria under eight years of President Bola Tinubu. Will we succeed? I will not, I will not uh, comment. Okay, that's fine. I figured that, but I had to ask, what is the legacy that you most want to be remembered for? <clears throat> that I came here mm. and God was uh, immeasurably kind to me mm. and showed his grace on me. Mm. And I thank God for that. Thank you so much for, for, the, for the pleasure of your time. Yes, All right, guys. And that is the interview for you guys. The full video, you don't have to like watch Have Have on Twitter, Facebook, and uh, conclude on what you don't know about. I like the fact that he has to like address that part of Tinibu saying that he wanted to cripple the economy of Lagos. Now, people now knows better. And that is it for you all, my people. I'm going to leave you all to share your thoughts with me on the comment section. And with that, I will say thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Your love, support, and effort upon this channel is not taken for granted. Let me know what you think, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.